In a couple of hours, we're going to get another read on inflation, this time at the producer level. This afternoon, the Fed's decision on interest rates uh, with markets anticipating what is being called a hawkish skip. A hawkish skip. And you can, I don't know if we need to explain that. You understand. Maybe not do it this time and say, yeah, we're ready to do it again if we need to. Join us uh, for more. Andrew Hollenhorst, chief U.S. economist uh, at Citi and covering the equity angle is Jake Jolly. He's a, a strategist and head uh, of investment an, uh, an analysis at BNY Mellon Investment uh, Management. Um, Jacob, I want to start with you. Uh, I, I, I was reading your notes, cautiously optimistic. That's, that's an interesting way of just saying, wow, I'm uncomfortable with this rally. Um, it's happening. <laughs> uh, I, and, and you point out, it, if you are too cautious, you, you miss it. And then I don't know how you ever buy in. We asked one of our guests yesterday, when would you ever buy in? He's like, oh, I don't know. It's like, it's too late to buy or too late to sell, but too early. I don't know. What, what, you're not in, and you may never get in. Which is it? Which, what, give me a, a real answer at 43.80 on the S&P. Should you buy it here or not? Well, I think the answer is nuanced. It is you stay in, <laughs> okay. but maybe you don't buy into certain parts of the market. Okay. Um, you know, the, the reality is, is that market timing is very, very difficult, right? I mean, my job is essentially to talk about market timing, but, you know, the bottom line here is that to be a successful long-term investor, it's more about being in the market than it is about trying to get these, uh, very short-term sort of tactical decisions, uh, right. So, uh, you know, as you said, we are certainly, uh, cautiously optimistic. Uh, it was kind of the nicest way that I could put it because, when we look across this this market and we look at the rally from from last October, um, you know we're very skeptical that this is a sustainable new bull market rally that we're in, um, and the reason for that is that you know it's obviously a very narrow market rally. Um, we see that financials are lagging through this period. The equal weighted S and P index has started to do a bit better, but really for much of this year has been lagging, and especially since the uh, the regional banking crisis in March. So when we look at that sort of setup um, and then obviously pair it with what we think is going to happen on the macro side in, in the near term, uh, we think that you need to be very cautious about this rally and definitely pick your spots. Uh, this is not the time to sort of just blindly buy the index. For macro, we'll go to, to Andrew, guest Andrew, our, our guest. Uh, Andrew, the uh, CPI, yeah, there was something for everyone. Uh, Obviously, because the, the regular CPI was, was down again and looked much better than it had. It was like half. But the core still, um, still stubbornly high. Today, we're getting PPI. Energy prices, as you point out, might be a, a tailwind for a better number. But then in the service sector, we got to worry about where the real uh, ingrained inflation might be. So what do you expect today for PPI? Yeah, I think we're going to see some cooling in PPI. And just like you went through, there are some reasons to think that goods price inflation, energy inflation is running lower now. But I really think we have to take a step back. It's easy to get bogged down in the details and cut things up, slice things up, find a PPI or CPI aggregate that we like, that tells the story we like. When you step back and look at the inflation data holistically, we're just running 5% inflation. I mean, there's just a lot of different senses in which underlying inflation is around 5%. So the Fed really still has a big task ahead of it. That uh, they are between a rock and a hard place. We're going to have Judy Shelton on a little bit later. And every time you raise rates, uh, the debt service over the next 10 years just balloons uh, and, and eats up everything else that we're trying to do and, and, and hurts growth. So the, the inflation is important, but there are certainly um, some other considerations. Uh, with this. The other thing, if no one comes back to work, Andrew, and, and um, commercial real estate's already in trouble, how do they know they're not going to break that next? We, it might not be a bank. It might be an entire sector that, that really causes trouble. Do you think that's on their radar screen every time they raise rates? Uh, absolutely it is. And that, that's why you're seeing the Fed be a little bit cautious here. And this idea of a hawkish skip that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, to be honest. If the Fed wants to do something hawkish, I think the easiest thing to do would just be to go ahead and raise rates today. Um, but maybe they're going to skip. Um, if, if they skip today, yes, the reason why is because 
They want to wait and see how this transmits through the banking sector. But the reality is that they're not going to see that in real time. I think you really just have to keep moving against inflation. That's the mandate. That's the target. And yes, these banking concerns are there. It's probably a very slow moving thing. It can all of a sudden accelerate. But that, that, that's not something that I think the Fed is going to be able to control by, you know, hiking in July versus hiking in June. Do we really think that's going to make a big difference for the banking system? Dick, before we go, just want to just clear exactly clear what you're saying. You expect this rally to fail, basically, don't you? I think it's going you know, to be I, tough. Oh, oh so, sorry, Andrew, Andrew, going back to Jake. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, this is unlikely. If we if we play the probabilities, uh, this is unlikely to be the start of the next uh, bull market. Um, I think, you know, when we look at equities, when we look at the the macro outlook, we think that there is so, going to be pressure on equities um, in the near term, which so is So we get a 20 percent, we, we get another bear market before we enter a bull or a 10 percent correction before we enter a bull? How, I mean, how much of a pullback, if the rally does fail, are you expecting? Well, you know, we, we have to play the probabilities here. Uh, and we do think that the probability of a recession is quite a bit higher than the probability of a soft landing. And okay. I think to, to buy into this rally, you really have to believe that the soft landing is okay. well above 50 percent. And we don't think it is. Right. Um, so we do think that in a recessionary environment, you're going to break below 4,000, right. potentially testing those October levels. A Andrew, the economist, was ready to answer my market uh, question about whether to buy. I love that. Uh, you, you do that, too, uh, Andrew? You want to tell me whether— I, I was just I was just going to agree with Jake here. I mean, Fed yeah. has to do something hawkish, has to get inflation down. That's not going to be a good scenario for equities, absolutely.